So go, please. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so welcome everybody to this workshop presentation. My name is Alessandra Valmadre and I'm going to introduce to you our work. So as you can see, the workshop is called Co-Creating a Niche Mountain Destination Through the Web, the case of Val Tatano. In the next slide, you can see all the people who took part in the work. So the nine students, the two responsible professors and the stakeholders who demonstrated an interest in our work. In the next slide, you can see the nine areas into which the presentation is declined. I'm going to start talking to you about this workshop, which is coded PMTS03. So this is one of the workshops that the planning and management of tourism system master's degree course at the University of Bergamo organizes each year for the second year students. It was, it was designed and supervised by Professor Roberto Peretta and it focused on the optimization of the website Explore Val Tartano, which you can see on the right, which was created for Val Tartano. Uh, in the province of Sondrio during last year's workshop. Uh, one of the other aims was its potential publication, but we're still discussing about it. So the workshop started uh, at the end of February and it's going to end during May 2020. It had to be moved online because of the spread of the coronavirus after only one face-to-face -face meeting. So we had to use a variety of online platforms and means to carry out meetings and decision-making processes, and also to connect with stakeholders. We used, for example, Skype, Zoom, Microsoft Teams, Google Form, and then we exchanged emails, etc. The main topics of the workshop were the interviews with some of the valley inhabitants who play an official role in it, such as alpine guides, hoteliers, local experts, etc. Then the Google Alerts analysis, technical enhancements of the website, ski mountaineering, and the experience of the crossing of Ponte nel Cielo, which you can see on the left of your screen. Since, as I said, the publication of the website is still being discussed, the materials that we produced are to be found in a Google Drive folder and on a YouTube channel called Team Valtatano UniBG that you can see on the right of your screen. At the end of the meeting, if you want, we can have a look at some of the videos that we produced. So we've left a link to the YouTube channel. Now I'm going to leave Vera talk about the Valley and Google Alerts analysis. Thanks, Alessandra. No very problem. well done. No problem. Uh, just a, a very short <laughs> interruption. Alessandra is a bit of a recent uh, addition to the workshop <laughs> because uh, she asked to be admitted as an unofficial participant, uh, living not far <laughs> from Valtorto, no? Exactly. And so, um, okay, just to tell you now. Yeah, thank you. Vera? Yes. Okay, can I start? Of course you can, you're welcome. Okay. Okay, I will start. Vera, with sorry, the could you please switch on your camera because it's good to see your faces while you're talking. <sighs> Well, she, Vera is usually very shy because there's uh, more people around her while she talks. But <laughs> no, I think it's better, Vera, to, yeah, to it's watch nice your to face her. while you're talking. It's better. Actually, um, off while you're okay, I'm using my phone, but the camera is still on. No, we can see, it, see you very well. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll talk about the Valley and the Google and the Alert Analysis, which was um, distributed among all of us for us to analyze. And then when we were analyzing the Google and the Alert, 
we focused on the most important topics, which were the Ponti Nel Cello, the sport, excursions, accommodation, infrastructure, local events, maps, nature, and food tourism. And then from our analysis from graph one, we summarized that 57% um, of um, the people who visit um, Val Tartano were interested in tourism activities and 12% were pages not found and 2% were, uh, which was related to social media platforms. And then from graph two, we can deduce that tourism related activities were the most relevant in Val Tartano and that the most important activity relating to tourism activity was relating to Ponte Nel Cello, followed by the valley, followed by sports activities, and then um, sport activities. Can you please change the slide? Yes. Okay. Thanks. And then the reason why people visit the Ponte, that is the valley, where because it gives people an inner feeling and it gives them an emotional feeling and it gives them um, a beautiful view of the valley. And then people visit with their family because tickets are free for children below six years. And then the next activity relating to Val Tartano is sports. And then sport activities are organized throughout the year in summer and winter so that nobody is left out. The sport activities are generally organized in competitions which brings a lot of people to the valley. And then because Val Tartano is rich in history and natural environment, people who visit there feel connected to nature once they are there. These visits are mostly organized in the form of excursions, which are organized throughout the year. And then some of the places people visit are the Laghi di Porcello, which consists of three groups of lakes, which con uh, uh, three groups of lakes, and the lake contains water from the rain and groundwater from the melting snow. We have ethnographic museum of wood which exhibits things which have disappeared from our everyday lives. Orobio Botanical Garden is surrounded by natural settings like forests and uh, uh, like rivers. Chima della Cadeni, which is located between Paso Pocelli and Paso Pordeni. On top of it is a statue of the Achen. A Chanel Gabrielli erected in memory of the victims of 1987 Batalena flood. And then the main source of accommodation available to tourists are Arbego La Gran Beita, Arbego Ristorante Pizzeria Miralago, and Arbero Ristorante Balunga. But only Arbero La Grande, can you? Okay, thanks. Arbero La Gran Baita and Arbero Restaurante offers free Wi-Fi, free parking, and free breakfast for visitors. And then maps are also given to tourists at various information centers, like when you get to Chiavena, Morbino, Sandro, Tirano, and Bormio. Uh, people who get there are given maps and these maps contain information like um, ski and other skiing activities, information about the mountains, where to park, rent a bicycle, park your bike, where people can walk, rest, and eat. And um, can you, okay, thanks. And then food activities. Local events are organized in the form of to food tourism. This event usually takes place in autumn and on weekends. The event offers visitors the chance to discover their traditions, 
meet local products and taste their food products. Some of these local exhibitions are Bito exhibition, which involves street food testing, Mobino in Katina, which offers visitors to taste traditional food and wine. The Light of Polenta offers a chance to taste a variety of food made with polenta. Gosto Sando in Vatelina showcase food and wine in traditional towns and villages. Oh, uh, that's me, uh, very quickly, because most sites have been already already detailed in the main, in the main time. So uh, please, Andrea, just go ahead. Um, only okay. thing that you can notice more that uh, Facebook was also another uh, interesting, uh, useful tool, meaning that uh, because Facebook was not detailed in the beginning of this presentation, but actually a private group through Facebook was a way to keep in touch and discuss in, in a day-by-day -day basis. Uh, also, I'm sure that all the other participants had um, um, another connection, which is a WhatsApp group, of course, of which, of course, I didn't take, uh, didn't take part because it was something for day-by-day -day connection among the participants only. Uh, I only, only have to mention that a um, piece of paper, an article was published in the meantime uh, from out of the blue because it was simply journalists who come across some news about the workshop and interview one of the participants and the workshop uh, produced also um, an interesting discussion following this paper presentation on, on the workshop. Uh, I think that's all. Uh, sorry for taking your time myself. Who's going to talk about storytelling? Me, I'm going to talk about the storytelling. Uh, hi, everyone. Hello. I'm Francesca, and I will introduce you to um, our storytelling part of the workshop, uh, which I work together with Juzi and Laura. Uh, so, uh, the aim of this part was uh, to provide interviews with groups of uh, local people who live or have a, a strong connection to uh, Val Tartano, uh, because some of the people we, um, we actually interviewed are not living in Val Tartano, but they go there uh, for holidays or to work. Um, but this this part was supposed to be uh, the most narrative part of our workshop and uh, one of the most creative. So um, we started with the idea. Uh, well, we identified a group of five six people we wanted to uh, to contact and to interview, and then for um, each one of, each one of them, um, we decided um, to ask the same question at the beginning. So what's the favorite place in Val Tartano or um, what's the, the connection they have and why do they have it? And then um, we thought about specific questions uh, related to their job or uh, to the, the, the type of relationship they actually had with the, with the valley. Um, Andrea, can you please change the slide? Thank you. Uh, so I um, interviewed uh, Monica Berlascini. Uh, she's the owner of the Hotel Miralago, uh, which is the hotel that it's uh, right in front of the Ponte nel Cielo. So it has uh, a very strategic uh, location though of course the hotel was born before way way before the <coughs> the the ponte nel cielo uh, so my interview with monica focused on the history of the hotel um, which she uh, and her um, brothers in, inherited by uh, from her grandfather and then uh, she discussed the type of tourists that stay overnight at her hotel and why uh, these tourists decide to uh, 
sleep in in Campo uh, instead of just going for a day trip and just walk the bridge and 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 then leave. Um, <coughs> then she explained all the services that they uh, have in the hotel because they have quite a lot of services and they provide also tours for their um, guests. And then I asked her about the, the current situation related to COVID-19 and how they are coping and what, what she expects for the future. And she was actually very positive and it was very nice to, to listen to uh, what she had to say. Uh, but the results I got from her interview uh, were that the Ponte nel Cielo is, uh, it's not the main attraction of Val Tartano. So for her, the, the natural beauty of the valley uh, is what really uh, captures tourists once they arrived to, once they arrived to, to walk the bridge and then they arrive at the hotel even just for uh, a coffee or something because there's a cafe in the hotel. And they, they usually tell her, wow, this place is beautiful and I will come back to walk this path or this or the other one. It's not just the Ponte nel Cielo, Val Tartano, it's much more. And uh, Andrea, thank you. Um, uh, the same idea, we got it from uh, Davide Spini, who is a, an Alpine guide. And I um, did this interview I carried out this interview together with Alessandra and Stefano because they took care of the uh, of the ski mountaineering part uh, of the workshop. And we asked him about his job and of course his relationship with the valley because he does not live in, in Val Tartano, but he goes there very often uh, for his job. And his grandparents were from there. Um, and then we uh, we were particularly interested in knowing the best uh, ski mountaineering path and the ones uh, the the ones he um, he walks uh, or he takes uh, people more often to. And as said before, he said basically the same thing that Monica said to me, uh, so that the nature is really the the strong, the strong uh, point in in Val Tartano, and now Juicy will introduce her yeah. interviews. Yes. I'm Juicy. Good morning, and uh, I interviewed uh, Clara Spini, who was a student of this master course, uh, and uh, um, and the the person who gave the idea of um, who started the idea of this workshop. So the interview with Clara Spini uh, was made through a phone call and uh, it focused on her relationship with Val Tartano and her childhood memories. Also her opinions about the construction of the Ponte nel Cielo and uh, the other points of interest of, uh, of the valley. And uh, uh, what, came out, what came out during this interview was also um, the um, the presence uh, beyond of the, um, the main bridge of uh, other bridge, so uh, the interesting part of the bridge. Uh, and uh, what came out uh, um, from this interview is the importance of preserving and valorizing the uh, natural beauty of, uh, of the valley. And uh, it's the same message that uh, we try to announce uh, through a video, um, Voci dalla Val Tartano. Uh, which was made and, uh, um, and, and it's available on uh, YouTube. Sorry, so Juzi, uh, I don't yeah. want to interrupt you, but uh, can we see right now one of the videos or is it uh, an unwelcome interruption? Sorry, I, I didn't understand. I mean, um, since you, you are describing how you managed to produce these videos, I was wondering whether we can see one of these videos right now during the presentation. Yes, sure. Yes, we can. Yes, uh, they are, there. They want there to, are the links at the end of the presentation. You want to see one now? One now or? You know. As you like, but I guess that people who simply don't know about our work don't have any idea of <laughs> what in any of these um, 
videos uh, looks like. So if there is a short one to be seen right now, then we go on and Juzi can uh, yes, re sure. regain the, her, inter her intervention. But sorry, I have to share also the... Um, just if you video. want Andrea yes. to start uh, the, the video about Clara. Yes, yes, just I have to share the... Um, Thank you. Sorry for making you wait. Um, <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry. Because I have to share also the... You have to stop sharing your presentation and open in YouTube or whatever. If it's not too difficult, I mean, if it's a, a bit of a, of a problem, just go ahead. No, because there is an option, but I don't remember how to um, share. Maybe okay. going from... Okay. Yes, okay. okay. You manage, okay. Uh, perfect. Then. Tell me if you see it. Yeah. I guess we yeah. can, okay. Yes. It takes a bit to be actually downloaded and make made available. Mi ricorda casa. Da sempre quando No. <laughs> I think it's because it's in streaming. Non state va da tarda o non lo so sempre andare a piedi nudi. C'è questa cosa particolare della Valle che è divisa in contrade, questi gruppi di abitazione anche proprio all'interno del paese. Arrivi a Tartano e la valle si divide in due valli più strette diciamo, una si chiamava il Corta, l'altra si chiamava il Lunga e anche in queste due ulteriori valli ci sono sorti agglomerati di, di case, ognuna con il proprio nome. L'integrità del territorio è un, è un punto a favore per un turismo comunque di nicchia. dei posti, è un sentiero molto bello durante questo percorso che dura circa due ore e mezzo, vai a fare eh, tutti i ponti della valle, parti dal ponte, dal ponte nel cielo e poi fai una serie di ponti anche abbastanza antichi, anche perché passi appunto da alcune contrade, più in alto rispetto alle altre, quindi c'è tutta la città delle costruzioni, e ci arrivi solo a piedi, se sei in montagna piena sono sentieri. Thanks, Andrea. You're welcome. Now I will go back to... It was, yeah, it was simply to uh, make clear to people who are listening to your description, actually yeah, the sure. products yes. you, 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 you developed, which I think it's very high quality. It's very interesting. Congratulations for what you did. Molto so, bravi. Juzi, go Thank ahead. You. Sorry for interruption. Yeah. Just wait for the sharing of screen. Yeah. You see the slide? No. Do you see them? Because I no, no not no. yet. Okay. Okay, we see no YouTube. <laughs> okay, now I, I know what to do. <laughs> um, this one. Stop sharing and choose. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, and they the are the first one. Okay, this jockey, I see. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. So, so the other interview was made uh, to Giorgio Spini, who is uh, the father of Clara, Clara Spini, and uh, it focused, uh, no, it, uh, it was made uh, in a written way, so um, he answered my questions by email, 
and uh, it focused on his relationship with the valley and his memories, the change of the valley over time. So um, the change uh, from uh, an agri the, yeah, the transition from an agricultural society to an industrial one, and uh, the historical events and tradition of the society and the valley. And uh, one of uh, he, his main research on the block bow technique, uh, um, which is uh, the characteristic of the buildings that you can find uh, in Valtartano, and uh, the Alta Via project that he made in cooperation with uh, Pier Giorgio Spini. Uh, what came out from this interview is that uh, he showed a strong attachment to the place and uh, he underlined uh, the need for uh, um, uh, an awareness by the community and uh, the institution of the territorial, environmental and historical heritage of uh, the valley. Um, so now uh, Laura will um, talk about her interview to Pier Giorgio Spini. Go ahead, Laura. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm Laura and I took care of the interview to Pier Giorgio Spini, who is uh, the husband of Monica Barlascini, so he also works at the Mirago Hotel. And he is a friend of Giorgio Spini, and they collaborated in the creation of the Alta Via Pathway, which is a 43-kilometer trail, uh, which goes around uh, the valley. So my interview with him, uh, he, he actually was very kind, I sent him uh, uh, some questions and he filmed himself uh, while answering them against uh, the beautiful background of uh, Valtartano. He actually has a beautiful uh, view from his home. And the questions were about the creation process of the Alta Via pathway, some hidden gems in Valtartano, the evolution of tourism in the valley before and after the construction of the Ponte nel Cielo, and also an opinion on the future of tourism in Valtartano uh, after the COVID-19 pandemic. So the, this interview resulted in two, four short videos, uh, one for each topic, and uh, I added English uh, subtitles to them and I uploaded them on the YouTube channel. Thank you. So can, can I, next, uh, Andrea, yeah. sorry, can, can I just add something about my two interviews because I forgot to say yes um, that uh, for the one with Monica uh, Barlascini she answered to my questions with a, a whatsapp voice message that I edited and I'm making a video of it I had uh, some problems in using the 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 video making program and my first attempt to make the video uh, was not successful so i'm about to finish the video so it will be available on our youtube channel in a couple of days maximum and thanks francesca you're welcome okay uh, sorry I'm, andrea no don't worry <laughs> thank you um i am andrea and i'm going to present you the part related to the website which has been created last year from our colleagues in the last year workshop, as my colleagues mentioned before. Uh, the first impression of this website is that uh, it is really well designed and uh, eye catchy, but it um, main um, uh, um, main uh, strength strength point is that uh, it is easy to navigate. And it's a logo, it's as well um, impressive because it's uh, suggestive and uh, I don't know if you see it, but uh, it's uh, Explore Valtartano and uh, it links to the mountains and uh, to trekking activities and uh, I think it's also easy to remember this logo and uh, as well easy to search uh, on, uh, on Google. But the only uh, lacking of this uh, homepage is that uh, there is no reference to the location of, of uh, Valtartano. Then we have uh, introduced, uh, the, we have created this uh, animated GIF uh, which starts from uh, Italy in its entirety and then uh, zooms uh, till uh, Valtartano territory. Uh, we have also provided some detailed uh, suggestions for, optima for optimization of the website. Uh, and uh, the, one of, the, of them is uh, to uh, give more visibility to ski monitoring activities because it's the second reason why people come to Valtartano 
and uh, it would be necessary to provide also a network of the valleys uh, because uh, Val Tartano is made of, of uh, many valleys like Val Lunga, Val Porta, Val di Lemme and uh, it would be uh, interesting for visitors to have also the cultural and natural information related to, to them uh, and uh, so uh, provide a section of uh, flora and fauna which exist there uh, and uh, for instance suggest to visitors to use uh, and download some apps uh, when they arrive in the destination, like uh, PlantNet, uh, which uh, allows visit uh, allows the users to know exactly which is the name of the of the plant uh, by taking a photo uh, with your with the smartphone, uh, or uh, provide the visitors um, a list of the best hotspots where to take a, a picture of. Uh, of this beautiful place uh, and uh, obviously we um, we have a thing that uh, it would be necessary to provide also a section uh, called the Vox de la Val Tartano where to collect all the materials and all the um, the opinion coming from the local uh, voice uh, to let them speak about their territory as uh, they prefer. Uh, then it is important to provide the reference uh, of these sources and uh, provide uh, and choose a license for this website because if the purpose of this website will become uh, commercial then it will be necessary to provide uh, a copyright license. Uh, other uh, more uh, suggestions were to provide uh, a weather uh, or in the climate information because uh, for the visitors who want to plan in advance a visit to Val Tartano or to provide uh, the booking service uh, for, uh, I don't know, each, uh, both for um, accommodation but also for the other activities like uh, uh, sport activities and uh, guided tours uh, but uh, in in the case of uh, there is not possible to provide the booking service then it would be necessary to provide at least links or direct contacts like emails or phones or number uh, then uh, we have also thing to create um, a social media network because it will uh, enhance the visibility of the website and uh, if uh, the visitors will become uh, international, that would be then will be necessary to provide also an English version of the website. And uh, of course, uh, the, having a website uh, needs uh, uh, current, uh, um, sorry, uh, constant uh, work and updating because uh, it's something that uh, has to last forever, or at least uh, for a longer period. <laughs> and uh, this is an example of uh, the social network media uh, because uh, we have seen that uh, if you provide uh, many materials on different uh, social networks, then uh, the website will have more visibility uh, and uh, will be easy to find on the web. I will let my colleagues speak about uh, the Tibetan Bridge. Hi, I'm Valentina and uh, with Marta we are going to talk about the Tibetan Bridge. The name of the bridge is Ponte nel Cielo and it represents, as my colleagues already pointed out, one of the main motivations to visit Val Tartano. We were not just interested in knowing more about the experience itself of the bridge, but uh, we also wanted to know how it is uh, connected with the surrounding. So we start uh, analyzing its web presence, looking at uh, Instagram and Facebook posts, and also on the reviews that are present on TripAdvisor. From the information we, we collected, we created uh, a few questions to be used in our qualitative interviews with the, a couple of visitors that had the possibility to experience the bridge and uh, the valley itself. And from the answer we get, we create a, a questionnaire that has been uh, spread across uh, um, Facebook groups and also thanks to Professor Burini through our uh, university channels. And uh, on the 27th of March, we collected uh, about 40 answers that uh, um, are going we, we are going to describe uh, in the following slides. The, for the 72% of uh, visitors, the Ponte nel Cielo still represents the main motivation to visit the valley. And uh, it is mainly a family destination. 
but also, as you can see in graph three, uh, also um, group of friends or people with their partners are um, very um, willing to, to visit the valley and the bridge. The most effective tools used as long as uh, social and uh, um, TripAdvisor reviews uh, to know the bridge was uh, through word of mouth and uh, the majority of people reach the place by car without uh, um, difficulties in finding uh, a car park. Uh, from the majority of people, the experience itself was perceived uh, as uh, something in between peaceful, euphoric, but also a bit of anxiety and fear while crossing the bridge, of course. And uh, <clears throat> on our questionnaire, we were also interested in know about uh, the opinion of people about the price and the payment methods. Um, the price was perceived quite fair for the, the attraction itself. And uh, the majority of people, um, bought the ticket on site rather than rather than online. Uh, another topic covered by the questionnaire were the activities and services related with the bridge and we asked people to evaluate them and uh, we wanted also to know which were the the most used ones and uh, for the 40 percent of uh, the people who um, answer our questionnaire um, they said that the bar by the bridge was uh, the most important thing used by them during the the visit then 22 percent of them use restaurants and uh, only 12.5 percent use an accommodation service the second part of the data will be described by marta Thanks, Valentina. Good morning, everyone. Now I'll uh, show you the second part of the of our questionnaire. Uh, we also inquired uh, the way interviewees uh, got uh, information about the place and the services. Uh, they respond uh, that it was uh, easy to find uh, information about uh, these um, services and the place. Then we inquired uh, the, uh, the staff of the bridge, so how visitors considered it. Uh, almost uh, everyone finds the staff uh, helpful. Uh, with one respondent that did not uh, consider it uh, helpful, so it is not satisfied. But the overall result uh, is uh, positive anyway. Uh, then we, we inquired the safety of the bridge, that is an important part of, uh, of the experience, very important. Uh, the safety is considered uh, by 67.5% very good, uh, the 25% considered it good, and only the 7.5% considered it uh, quite good. We measure the safety of the bridge uh, through a scale rating from one to five, uh, um, where one is the worst result, while uh, five is the best one. So we are um, satisfied also by this result. Uh, then we have a set of questions uh, concerning the official web pages of the bridge uh, on the web and uh, its uh, web presence. Uh, mm, as far as uh, social networks are concerned. Uh, we, it, can, it comes out that uh, the 67.5% of interviewees visited the official website of the bridge uh, and the, the presence of it uh, is considered uh, mainly good, while Instagram and the Facebook pages are not considered uh, by visitors. Uh, I mean, uh, less than 50% uh, of them visited uh, them on uh, social network uh, and uh, their presence is not uh, so good. In conclusion, uh, from, the, from, our, uh, from our questionnaire, we are satisfied, the visitors are satisfied with bridge experience. Uh, they are um, always satisfied and enthusiastic about this experience. Uh, but uh, the web presence uh, 
is uh, to be enhanced. Uh, on, the next, uh, on the next slide, uh, we have some consideration of interviewees about uh, post-post coronavirus situation. We gather some um, thoughts uh, of uh, visitors or locals uh, about uh, this experience in the future. And we, we have uh, different uh, thoughts uh, that differ from each other mm, in the sense that uh, uh, someone said that uh, this experience uh, has nothing to do with the virus, uh, so it uh, doesn't change um, the situation, while others have fear of um, the loss of visitors uh, in that area. Uh, in general terms, uh, we, we, we observe that uh, measures uh, we, uh, will be adopted uh, to keep uh, social distancing and to uh, ensure the experience uh, even after this uh, uh, pandemic situation. Uh, now it's uh, up to Stefano to talk about uh, sky mountaineering. Okay, um, yeah. Uh, sky mountaineering is one of the most important uh, activities related to the valley. And um, we can define it as a combination of alpinism and a downhill ski. And um, its popularity in the valley has been increased thanks to the ski club SC Valtartano. Um, we can say that during seasons where there is a lot of snow, then people can uh, start practicing this sport. The season can start from December and it can last till uh, spring. Um, among the most important, uh, most famous, lo popular locations, let's say, we can mention where skiers go. We can mention Cima di Lemma, Cima della Vallunga, Passo dei Lupi, Passo Tartano, with the highest uh, and the highest peak of the valley is the Monte Celeron summit called Piz Linera, I don't know how to pronounce it, uh, which is about 2,519 meters. And um, the, um, a lot of skiers come from Milan and Lecco up beside the valley. And um, so all this inf I got, uh, we got all these informations thanks to the interviews we had with the Alpine guides, like um, as Francesca already mentioned, like Davide Spini, but also Davide Codega. And then we got the, po we had the possibility to interview also um, Giovanni Tacchini of, S of, this, of uh, SC Valtartano. And um, SC Valtartano, uh, is the ski, official ski club, which has been officially founded in 1984, but unofficially it exists since uh, 50 years. And they organize every year uh, ski mountaineering competitions in winter and uh, running races in the summer. Uh, around more than 100 people are affiliated with the club. And um, when we talk about the target, so we have to make a distinction between the professional world and the amateurs world. So uh, among the pros, uh, there is a um, it's the among the pros is like uh, the target is divided between composed by eighty five percent of male and fifteen percent of female, while among the amateurs there's more balance, so we have 40% female and 60% male. And the participants uh, come from the valley more and um, places in the nearby, such as Morbegno and Colico. And we also uploaded a questionnaire on the, um, some Facebook groups, some about Val Tartano and some others about uh, ski mountaineering in Italy. Um, we had uh, good feedback. A lot of people actually answered, so it was good. And um, yeah, these people mentioned the love for nature and sport as the main reason why they decided to take on this sport. But also, uh, some other mentioned the fact that 
this started also as a, as a family activity like this for example um uh, i think david spini started because he um, no giovanni tacchini started because he as a because his father used to take him to the mountains um also freedom fun and wellness are the main sensations that most hearers feel while they are on the slopes they usually if we have to talk about the tar the main characteristics of the target we can say that they are people looking for adventure uh, adrenaline and yeah freedom um based on the uh, answers we had we can say that uh people generally like to do ski, practice this sport with people so it can be seen yeah, as i said as a family activity but also as a, an activity that you can share with friends only a small per percentage of people uh, declare that they prefer to do it alone and um Valtartano is highly rated in terms of quality because um even though most of the participants to the questionnaires were not locals they they defined the paths of the valley as uh, the majority defined them as uh, excellent or perfect and um, the huge percentage like 90 uh, 97% of them uh, declared that they would suggest they, they would recommend the valley to their fellow skiers even though they are not from the valley so uh, we can say that the valley is highly considered by uh, the ski mountaineering world and now we leave the words to laura yes um the last section is about the covid 19 19 pandemic which had undoubtedly to be taken into consideration during our research since it had an impact not only on the way in which the workshop was carried out completely in a digital way, but also on the present and future of tourism in Valtartano. As we all know, sadly, uh, Lombardy was the most dramatically uh, affected region of Italy, and this led the, the government to uh, decide for the closing of schools and universities from the 24th of February and then uh, on a lo total lockdown from the 8th of March until the 4th of May. Um, we asked for uh, some opinions about the COVID-19 pandemic in some uh, of our interviews, namely the ones to Pier Giorgio Spini and his wife. Can you raise your, your voice a bit? Speak yes. louder. Thank you. Okay. Great. Um, we uh, inquired about uh, the opinions of, of some stakeholders to, um, about the COVID-19 uh, uh, emergency and about how tourism in Valtartano will recover after it. Luckily, no cases of COVID-19 have been recorded in the Valley up to yesterday, uh, but uh, the tourism sector was inevitably affected by it. Uh, but as we already mentioned, um, people from there are quite positive about, uh, about this, uh, and they are confident that um, the tourism sector will restart eventually, if not in the summer season, then later. And hopefully once the emergency is over, tourists will go back to Valtartano to enjoy the breathtaking views, to take long walks and breathe some fresh air. Uh, and finally, we also inquired about the, the pandemic in the Google form uh, survey, which my colleagues uh, have already talked about and two out of 30 questions were about it. Uh, the first one was uh, open-ended, so they asked, uh, how do you imagine the experience about Ponte nel Cielo after the COVID-19 uh, pandemic? And most answers agreed that the experience will not change drastically, since an attraction like the Ponte nel Cielo is rather easy um, to be controlled uh, and to uh, put into effect some um, uh, safety measures like the health checks uh, and uh, um, con controlled entrances to the bridge. On the other hand, some answers claim that uh, the tourism flows will probably decrease, 
partly because of the initial reluctance to travel and a niche destination like Val Tartana will um, have more difficulties and will take even longer to regain momentum. And the second question was uh, a yes, no question. So uh, would you visit again the Ponte nel Cielo after the coronavirus emergency? Luckily, 75% voted yes and only 25% voted no. And now on to the, the conclusions. Uh, I will uh, leave the floor to Josie. Yes, thank you, Laura. So in conclusion, during uh, this workshop, we had the opportunity to, um, uh, to understand how a site inspection and the local participation are crucial to better promote uh, a tourist destination. And uh, because of the pandemic emergence, uh, we uh, couldn't uh, reach the place and we couldn't meet uh, uh, the people who live and work uh, there in the valley. Um, and uh, in this context, uh, the use of technology partially filled <coughs> this gap. So we used the uh, technology uh, to uh, make research about the valley through the Google Earth analysis or to see photos and videos. For example, uh, um, thanks to the Facebook group Amici della Val Tartano, uh, or to meet virtually people, so using video calls, emails, uh, uh, and so on. And also to collect information and opinions about uh, uh, the valley, the, the main attraction of the bridge, uh, through the, um, the two questionnaires that um, we made. So technology was the tool, uh, a useful tool that shortened distances uh, between us and the place and people of Altartano. And uh, um, it can be um, defined as uh, the bridge that uh, um, the, our bridge uh, in this co-creation uh, process. So we call it co-creation because uh, the participation of local people and local stakeholders in our workshop was uh, fundamental. And so from uh, this uh, um, co-creation, we learned uh, um, that uh, the Val Tartano cannot be reduced to simply to the, the bridge in the sky, to the Ponte del Cielo, uh, but uh, um, the whole territory should be announced uh, and not. So future research, um, the next slide. Future research should include, uh, can you hear me? <laughs> oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you can talk, still talk about your future research. <laughs> yeah, certainly. future research should include the individuation and valorization of other points of interest beyond the bridge. So mountain trails, natural paths, lakes, um, and so on. Also, the can I can go ahead? Can you no, see the slide? I don't have the, the next slide, sorry. Oh. <laughs> I don't know why. Just to have a check. Don't worry, we don't need them. You can okay. go. Okay. <laughs> we are following your. Okay. Oh, yeah, but uh, okay, I have it now. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why it doesn't work. Okay, go ahead. Here we are. Okay, so um, also the promotion of uh, a specific target of tourists is important. So uh, the individuation of um, uh, conscious tourists, um, of a um, tourist. Um, uh, who is, uh, for example, a nature lover or a ski mountaineering uh, practitioner. And uh, so it's important to promote a sustainable and conscious tourism, uh, respectful of the environment and also of uh, uh, residents, so local people. Uh, another point uh, is uh, uh, the street cooperation of local stakeholders and residents. So uh, it's important to um, to use a participative approach. And uh, um, last but not least, uh, the promotion of the intangible heritage. So the stories, the oral tradition uh, are also a heritage that should be promoted and valorized as Giorgio Spini with his interview showed us. So that's it. And uh, thank you for your attention. <laughs> thank you for your attention. Yeah, thank you very much. Do you want to stop sharing? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I think that, well, uh, first of all, questions. For instance, uh, I could tell um, as a sort of creative 
of myself, co-creation happened to be basically among the workshop and the people uh, on locals. It was impossible in this phase producing co-created new products um, with actual purists because that was really impossible. So in a way, uh, among the future uh, research could be about uh, actual co-creation of new uh, tourist products. And for instance, the very interesting uh, Alta Via across the, the divide of the, of the valley, which could be something producing new uh, products, well, actual implementation of products. It's, um, I'm sorry, uh, basically I just want to say that co-creation can be used to describe the workshop but it was impossible to use co-creation in producing um, new uh, tourism products, which was the initial uh, um, task of, of the workshop two years ago. Any questions? Roberto, can I, can I intervene? Because I have a meeting that I have to follow. You're very welcome to, okay, to, 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 to say anything so, you like. But, first um, of all, uh, I thank Roberto to invite invite me today. Uh, I really appreciate it, Roberto, because I think that it's very good to share the experience that our students are doing, and it's a it's an instrument for me to see how we work as a group of teachers. So for me, it's very important both because I'm interested, and both for my role of connecting and making all of us in the teaching staff working together with common plans and common objectives. So thank you very much. Uh, I think that uh, this group made a very good job. Uh, first of all, because you demonstrated to have acquired many disciplinary competencies that you uh, put together. So I heard about the use of some concepts that you did in my courses, for example but I also uh, heard many things that you learned in other courses. Um, and so I think this is very precious to demonstrate that in your, at the end of your second year, you are able to mix your competencies. Uh, this is our objectives. And so uh, I'm very happy to see that you are able to do it. So you are building your professional competence to face problems of a territory, to analyze the context, the territorial context, to uh, identify uh, and juicy, not individualize. Don't say individuation. Where is juicy? Ah, yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Identifying is better. Identify, yeah. Um, so I think that from the point of view of uh, the main teaching objectives, this workshop demonstrate that you guide them. And so I'm very, very uh, happy to see this uh, because you are, um, you. how can I say, you are, um, you are mature in the analysis. It's a very good analysis. Uh, maybe because you were helped by Professor Ferretta, maybe because some other students before you analyze this, uh, uh, this area. So there are some points that could be in favor of this maturity, but I think uh, that you are able to uh, to add other points, other uh, positive points to the analysis. And so this is very good. And you are continuing what Clara Spini promoted before. Um, so I'm very happy really um, about these, um, these competencies. Uh, the second thing is um, that you are recalling many times um, the theme of participation, of networking, virtual networking, real networking, which are so important today, especially after COVID-19 uh, crisis. So, um, and you also analyze the, the impacts of COVID-19 uh, crisis. So I'm very happy also because you are um, in the moment. Uh, you have uh, understood that, um, that we are entering a new phase of, um, of tourism planning and management, um, that we cannot go back and that you can use right the things that you have learned during these two years to do the difference for our territories. So sometimes um, 
you, my students say, oh my God, what do we do now after COVID? Tourism is, we have a crisis. I choose the, the wrong master course. No, you choose the right one because it's your competencies that we need now. It's so important that you can apply these competencies to make tourism different in the future. So really, um, I'm very happy. And as Professor Peretta said before, you also demonstrate you use different kinds of products, videos, uh, surveys, uh, PowerPoint presentations. Um, so I think that um, your presentation is very high standard and very complete. And uh, as we say, in a holistic perspective, as I like it. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Luisa, any observations from another university which we closely cooperate with? I shall unmute you. Okay. So thank you for inviting me. This is the first thing to say. I'm very I was impressed by the job, so you did a very good job, I think. I agree with Federica. I think you are now more skilled to address future problems, future projects. In, um, also an uh, interdisciplinary way, that's very important. So technology, uh, part of the solution, as you've seen. So people are also important. Roberto, io mi scuso, ma devo proprio correre. Cioè, non corro, sto, ma devo spostarmi. Arrivederci, grazie ancora. Eh. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Lisa, I, I, I can't, I don't know why, but you were muted for a while. Can you go ahead in your, because one of the reasons why I invited you is not only the, your scholarly competences, but also that you live in an Alpine Valley. So there's a bit in, in common uh, between uh, um, Val, Fiume, uh, Fiume and Valtartano. So I was also thinking about you find some similarities among the situation of this lateral valley or a bigger valley like, like Valdifiume. What's your, um, anything you can, you can add if you like. Is that a question to me? Yeah, in a way. Uh, similarities uh, 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 between uh, uh, Valtartano and um, TM, your valley. I'm sorry, but Zoom is cancelling, is uh, stopping to work. I can't answer your question. I'm looking forward to come to Valtartano, Tartano, <laughs> and I was also uh, wondering where the name come from, the name of the valley, and uh, Altifim is quite similar in many ways, but we are different, we are the Dolomites, of course, so this is a difference, but uh, Lagorai is very similar, so we have lakes, so we don't have so many beaches, so this is possibly the most important attraction points. So it's um, quite correct to use it, to use the Ponte del Cielo to communicate, to promote the valley. It's important. And as you've seen, people is coming back or is uh, off to be able to come back to work and to climb and to whatever. So uh, the most important thing to me is I'd like to be able to come soon and maybe to have you yeah, as you. guides to visit the valley. Maybe it will be possible, we don't know. So thank you again for everything. Thank, thank you for, for attending. Thank you. Uh, thank if there is anything you. else left, uh, uh, any question, any observation, 
I would like to conclude this uh, meeting underlining that uh, uh, especially in the Alps, uh, uh, it's more frequent or possible, uh, but the, one of the um, a new, new perspectives, new task in a way um, for tourism is going to come from local resilience, uh, bottom up in a way. And this is the case of Fertazzo too in a way, because uh, we think that the coronavirus crisis uh, will be more easily manageable starting bottom up from local communities, especially when they are already congregated, then for, uh, of course, airlines, hotels, chains, which can be able to organize things, but not really to make alive uh, people security uh, on the spot. So I, can, I think we can also take this workshop as an opportunity to show that bottom up initiatives are, or maybe uh, I think they will be uh, the main uh, condition for tourism to come back to its formal, its former glory. It's okay? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thanks to everyone, and I will go straight to visit uh, your YouTube channel to see the videos that haven't been seen. We will. Bye -bye. If you, Thanks a lot. If you if you give us the uh, I, I don't know in English the, the Benestare, we can uh, publish the yeah we can publish the, the videos and make them public and not. Unlisted. I think Unlisted. so, because I mean, videos are not mine. I, it's not me who have to give permissions. It's, okay. Uh, since the quality is absolutely more than acceptable, I think they could go public, absolutely. It's up to you anyway. Okay, in that, in that way, the YouTube channel will be visible.